from shell, from fiber, whatever you can think of, from sawdust, etc. Now, if we were to put in steam boilers and to burn these uh, waste in the steam boilers, we will immediately generate steam and then attach them to steam turbines to produce power. But no one is talking about these things. And you, you go around the Kumota area, you see many, many, many cottage farms with all these books lying about. Kumasi used to have hills of sawdust. Sawdust is a good potential for power production. In Sawan Pokwa's area, we used to have sawdust. They used to fill ponds and so on. Nobody has any serious program to do these things. That's what we are saying. What we are saying is that let us draw a program now. But we must forget that these programs must be comprehensive because they interrelate. Now, you see, the water lake is spreading out. One, because the water lake is a very slow-moving river. The water river is very slow-moving because it has a small slope. It's 0 0.002 slope. So you find it's moving very slow. As a result, siltation is taking place. And, the, and it's being aided by the few deforestation people cutting the trees around those areas for charcoal production. So as the trees are cut, of course, and the rains come, they wash their top cell into the, into the lake, and the lake is spreading. Mm. So that, you know, you have to link this your power program, because planting trees is not energy. It's okay. part of forestry. Sorry to cut so in, Mr. Wood. Yeah, sorry to cut in, Mr. Wood, but you've mentioned quite a number of options also. Uh, solar, wind, and you've also mentioned the steam uh, as well. Which of these do you think um, government can use within the immediate or uh, short term to at least um, as a backup towards the to solving the energy crisis because as you've rightly said uh, the, the um, Volta Lake which passed the Akonsumbo Dam is also currently under threat. I would be very happy, I would be very happy to see to ensure that we tap the Pra River potential. Pra has one twenty megawatts. And this formation has been there for about 40 years. 140, 120 megawatts is no small power. 120 megawatts is huge. Now, we have said that most of the rivers in Ghana have low gradients. They have low gradients so that the waters flow slowly. We have to use new technologies. When you narrow the river, then the, the, at the point of narrowing, you find that the water is moving very fast. Let me, for instance, explain the Akusumbo. If mm -hmm. you look at the overall length of the, or the breadth of the dam, it may be 100 meters or maybe not more than 120 meters. Because you have compressed the river at that point, that becomes the bottleneck. So you are discharging at that point about 2,000 tons of water per second. Mm -hmm. And that is why we're able to run the turbines. If you so, we need to have a comprehensive plan right now. All the plans simultaneously running. I okay. believe that because we are we are able to attract funds, we should go in not for two megawatts solar. I would want us to go in for if not five thousand in South Africa. Let us go in for at least two, three, four thousand megawatts from solar. Mm. But the bond the people are prepared to bring in the money and do it. Go in for the wind. Right now, people are trying to generate some power at Ada. Ada is at the end of the wind corridor from the Akusumbu lake. Akusumbu is, 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 is a power source. It's a power source apart from the river. You have huge winds. See, these winds are what we are, what the boats are capsizing hmm. because of these winds. And you have 1,000 kilometers of this wind okay. corridor. So, so please I start that. Hello. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, f I wanted to ask a final question. That so then your suggestion is that if government is going to um, borrow for any other um, is going to borrow, at least we should consider borrowing so that we can expand uh, or harness our potential in solar, for instance, and wind. That's your, Thank your proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's exactly what we are saying. Okay. But without energy, you can't have production. Hmm. Okay. All right, then. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it here for now, uh, Mr. Oh. Robert Wood. Uh, we thank you so much. Uh, he has been uh, articulating the CPP's alternatives or proposals, suggest supposed 
proposals or suggestions, if I can put that way, towards uh, halting the energy crisis. But let's move away from energy now. And authorities at the La Nkwantana Medina Assembly this morning embarked on a demolition exercise of structures along the Medina Highway to clear traders off the streets. The action follows a notice by the Assembly for the traders to stop selling their wares along the Medina Adenta Highway, which seemed to have been ignored. The Municipal Chief Executive of the La Nkwantana Medina Municipal Assembly, Franklin Anku, promised that his staff will stay dedicated to the current decongestion exercise being undertaken on the Lagos Medina stretch of the road in Accra. According to him, the exercise will not be a nine-day wonder and will help the engineers complete the construction of the road on time. The decongestion exercise on the Lagos Medina road commenced on uh, commenced today in an attempt to rid the streets of hawkers who have invaded it. The hawkers are reported to have made it difficult for commuters to use the road freely and disrupted the work of the engineers. The, La, uh, the municipal chief of the La Nkwantana Medina Municipal Assembly, Franklin Anku, spoke to join us. Oh, yes. Um, it's an exercise that we thought of it some time ago that we need to decongest the municipal capital, more especially the principal streets and then the highways along the Legon Adenta area, that where traders and hawkers have taken over all the streets, traffic has been impeded, human, both human and um, uh, vehicular. So we need to go in there and make sure that they are cleared so that we can all have our sanity. Some people have Well, you're still watching the Midday Brief here on Joy News on Multi TV. And uh, let's do some other stories now. In the next few months, residents in Teshinungwa and beyond will enjoy a free flow of vehicular traffic away from the heavy congestion that has for years characterized the road. Whether this promise by the municipal chief executive of the Lejukukuku Assembly, that's uh, Daniel Amate Mensa, will see the light of day, is another debate. Residents of Teshi, Nongwa and parts of Sakumono are passionately appealing to the government to come to their aid by constructing a proper road network in the town. According to them, the road has been left bare for many years with little attempt to improve it. The residents say the road, which is in very bad state, poses a serious threat to vehicular movement and human life. In fact, we are also frustrated. You can't understand why. You know, our roads should be like this, especially in this um, area. This is one of the first things the government should fix in this administration. The road linking the port and the capital city. It shouldn't, shouldn't that be so obvious? Uh, my, my, my dry season. I mean, I don't know. I don't I I I by the MCE, Daniel Mensah explains the road cannot be constructed without proper planning. According to him, before any road is constructed, there is the need to make provision for any alternative route in order not to inconvenience the public. The main road needs a total rehabilitation. Okay. Yes. And that one, it means that you have to close that session to motorists and take your time and work on it. And don't forget that there are no drains on the main road. Yeah. So the first thing we are going to do is to provide drains on both sides before we start. Time. It will not take a long time. I mean, you see, it's all brought down to planning. And like I'm telling you, if you plan well, it will end well. If you don't plan well, is your, we, we, we appreciate the concern of those who use the, 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 the rules and those who sell along the rules, that the tax is disturbing it. We all appreciate it. But it doesn't mean that we also rush into just doing something to certify them. We must plan well, and whatever we do should be something that will live, will be there for a very long time to come. He is hopeful government would ease the traffic congestion and improve the road network by the end of 2013. Well, uh, we hope they do indeed honor their promise uh, to fix that particular road.
Well, let's move along now. The mayor of Accra, Alfredo Kuvandapoy, is with a team of city engineers to inspect high-rise buildings in the capital. The tour is to ascertain if the buildings have permits and meet safety requirements. My, my colleague here for Swajemfi is with the mayor and his entourage, and she joins us live for an update. Uh, hello, yeah, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Matt. How okay, so where have you been so far? Okay, Matt, um, the mayor is starting some projects by the the um, AMA and then our first stop was at the Conti project which is at the Lavender Hill um, where they are trying to separate um, the liquid from solid mm. so that is uh, decomposing um, um, the solid waste you know the Lavender Hill has been um, a major source of problem to the metropolis exactly. and it's trying to eliminate the trash and, and, and then get the ocean clean and there's this project which is being undertaken at the Lavender Hill and it is being called the Conti project that mm. is a dewatering project and then um, I learned that this is um, um, going to be used to produce biofuel for growing more food and, and then it can also be used for it can also be used for fishing as well and then um, it has been indicated to us that in about a week or two weeks time this project will be completed and open to the public. And okay. then it has also six um, yeah, digesters, which would be used in filtering the whole um, solid thing from the liquid as well. Mm. So it is part of the sewage improvement system being done by the AMA. Mm. And then but we also moved on to Kolebu, um, where another project, which is also part of the sewage improvement uh, system, as in the pan latrine system, mm -hmm. um, the AMA is constructing um, some 40 to um, um, toilet facilities. And then currently the mayor tells me that um, 20 of them have been completed. And then um, by June this year, um, all 42 um, what, uh, toilet closets would be completed. And okay. so that is what I have for you for now, um, Matt. Because from Hollywood, do you know where the next stop would be? Okay, we are currently moving to um, the Salvation Army cluster of school. Okay. And so that is where we've gotten to now. So I'll get you an update of what we, we are doing currently. Okay, thank you very much, Yafuso Ajinfi, my colleague, who is touring uh, Accra to inspect some projects by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly with the uh, Chief Executive of the Assembly, Alfred Kovandapoy, and his entourage. Uh, so now, away from Accra, Let's move up north now. In an ironic turn of events, the pitch for a football match intended to promote peace in Yendi turned into a boxing ring as the two contenders, the military and prison officers, clashed in a fierce brawl. The incident happened in the final match when the referee of the day awarded a penalty against the military in the second half of the game after a prison service player was deliberately denied an obvious goal scoring opportunity in the 18th yard box of the military. This drew protests from teeming supporters of the military who rushed to the field of play to attack and beat up players and supporters of the prison service, resulting in some of them sustaining injuries. Yendi Municipal Chief Executive of Issa Zakaria, who was the guest of honor of the special peace game, had a tough trying to separate and mediate between the two security commands. He left very disappointed. I'm really, really surprised because uh, the security, they are to maintain peace. And if today they are not together, maybe just for the fun game, and then it, 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 it ends in this way, where the military and uh, the, the prisoners uh, are running after one another, knocking one another. Because you are to, 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 to ensure that there's peace in the area. Quickly, I'll have to organize a music meeting. Then uh, we discuss it so that the various commanders will have to go back to their house and then talk to uh, members. The fan game started very well with a lot of side attractions and fun among the security personnel in the area until the final match when the incident happened. <laughs> Well, this love-hate game of football, but I'm wondering if military and prison officers clash and say, okay, let me not go further. Let's stay in the north. Did you enjoy learning mathematics in school? Well, I didn't, but I found, because I found it too cumbersome, 
well, not entirely, but the story is not different today. Many of our children do too, but now students can enjoy studying the subject in a rather exciting twist of events. The Development Concern Centre, a non-governmental organisation working with rural communities in the northern region, has invented new numerals to make the teaching of mathematics easy for pupils as well as rural men and women. One has a, 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 a root, we call it a root, then you just put one bar across it. The outdooring of the new numerals brought together students, teachers and the leadership of the Ghana Education Service in the northern region. Director of the institution, Amadou Hudu, tells Joy News the new numerals will help reduce illiteracy in both urban and rural communities in Ghana. We have seen that uh, um, market women and men are finding it difficult to write the existing numerals or the western numerals. So, children too are finding it difficult sometimes. Well, it's not easy to write for. So, we decided to come up with numerals that can make teaching and learning easy for purpose in our schools and market women in the market. Students and invited guests were given a demonstration of how the new numerals work. Who represents uh, the root, then you put, you add uh, two bars across it. Well, maybe if I was there, I would find it a lot more easier, but I still am struggling a bit to see how that new numeral is going to um, help me, considering my history with maths. Okay, let's stay with education. The University of Cape Coast is considering a proposal to upgrade the, distance, the Center of Distance and Continuing Education from the next academic year, following an increase in student population at the center, which stands at 32,267. Which number, according to the Vice Chancellor of University of Cape Coast, Professor D.D. Kupo, calls for a complete overhauling of the structures and activities of the center to allow for effective and efficient management. It is envisaged that other academic programs of the conventional system will be added to the programs currently being run by the center. The vice chancellor who was speaking at the 45th congregation of the University Center for Continuing Education underscored plans to introduce from next academic year graduate programs in both education and business by distance learning. He maintained that the introduction of the new programs by distance is in response to the demands from the large number of graduates from the center who are desirous of furthering their education through the distance mood. The Minister of Education, who is also the immediate past Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Jane Nana Opokwajiman, hoped quality would be enhanced with the introduction of these and many other programs by the center. Of Finance Seth Tekbe will present the 2013 budget statement and economic policy to Parliament on Tuesday, March 5, 2013. A statement issued by the Public Relations Unit of the Ministry said the budget is expected to focus on the continuous stabilization of the economy, infrastructure development, and accelerating growth that will sustain the confidence in the future of the Ghanaian economy. It will also detail the achievements for the year 2012 and government economic policies for the medium term. In November 2012, Parliament approved expenditure in advance of appropriation for 2013, which has made it possible for government business to continue uninterrupted during the first quarter of the year. The statement added the budget to be presented will be will be the full year budget statement and economic policy for 2013 and it will be the first by Seth Tekbe who until now was a for a, a deputy finance minister but he's now a substantive finance minister but on that note we take a quick break we'll be right back stay with us here Welcome back to the Midday News. Now, all banks will soon sign up to a customer protection code that will compel them to indeed put customers first and not by rhetoric. This follows the Bank of Ghana's announcement that it will soon set up the customer protection code after several calls by analysts in the industry. If the CPC is finally launched, this code, this code for example, mean banks 
or any financial institution cannot mislead you about the advantages and disadvantages of any product. Customers would essentially be able to report banks to the BOG for appropriate sanctions. Announcing the central bank's intentions, the Deputy Governor, uh, Governor Melissa Na reiterated how important the customer is in the industry. He said the direct way the Bank of Ghana ensures customer protection is through the investigation and customer reporting office of the Banking Supervision Department, which is a conduit for customer complaints. According to him, the office has recently been strengthened to better protect the public as they engage with the banks. The BOG is also scheduled to introduce a customer protection code for adoption by the banking industry to enhance customer protection. In other stories, a private shipping company, African Independence Coastal Services, has officially acquired and commissioned what can be described as Ghana's first cargo ship. The multi-purpose ship MV Adobia will run feeder services in Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire to help reduce congestion at the Tama port, the Tama Takrade and Abidjan ports. African Independence Coastal Services is providing this important internal service on the continent after years of unsuccessful attempt by many shipping companies. MV Adobia can carry 650 20-footer containers and has a dead weight of 8,740. CEO Stanley Aholu says services provided by the ship are not intended to compete with multinational cargo lines. African Independent Coastal Services is in business to run a feeder service. The feeder service will ply the route initially between Tema, Takradi and Abidjan. We will carry containers and any other cargoes that are lined up on this route. We will be depending upon the multinational lines, that is the global lines, to assist us in terms of the cargoes that they need to trans, uh, transit through some of the ports that we will be, going, uh, be stopping at. Stanley Aholu urged the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority to grant the ship special preference, being an indigenous company, to enable the business succeed. FIDA requires that you go to the port, have a quick turnaround, that is you can go in while everybody is waiting out there, you can go in quickly and get out quickly. Load cargo quickly, discharge cargo quickly. Your cost have to be down, your cost cannot be at the levels that the multinational lines are are bearing, otherwise you would not succeed. There's one other thing that we thought was important. Because we started off from the point of view of this has to be a local company. This can be done in Ghana. This can be owned by Ghanaians. A ship can be owned by Ghanaians. A ship can be run by Ghanaians. And in fact, and very, very importantly, a ship can be financed by Ghanaians. Former President Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins, together with other dignitaries, had a word of advice for crew members. And I'm so, so happy that Ghanaian skill can be given life again on our seas. This time, you know, under the command and ownership of Ghanaian, uh, what you call it, enthusiasm and, and daring nature to want to achieve so, something. I'd like to take this opportunity to advise the, the seamen, the personnel, the engineers, the captain, and all those who will be operating on this vessel, you know, to maintain a high um, maintenance culture, to make sure that this vessel becomes profitable. I would say a very big welcome. We, on our part, we try to give as much as possible consideration to local cargo, consideration to local traffic. And we will see Adobia as local traffic. And we hope and pray that the crew on board will behave like any other serious vessel. CEO of Unibank, the financier of the ship, said his bank was happy to be a part of those who made the dream a reality. We also believed in the venture. We believed, as has been very well said by the Director General, in the need for feeder services on the West African coast, and in the need, if we as Ghanaians, as to give meaning to our developmental agenda, to have this in place. 
and we are also supporting it again because we believe in the Ghanaia. The ship was christened after the mother of CEO Stanley Aholu, Comfort Adubia. The crew members of MV Adubia are largely Ghanaians. Well, congratulations to the, the shipping line. And let's move along. The National Petroleum Authority, NPA, has given the assurance that the supply of liquefied petroleum gas LPG will improve this week. According to authorities, the supply of LPG was interrupted due to maintenance works on a pipeline that commenced last week in Tema. A visit to various gas stations in Accra showed long queues of vehicles and cylinders, an indication that there is shortage of LPG. The PRO of the National Petroleum Authority, uh, Yaro Kasambata, indicated that the supply of LPG would normalize in the course of the week. According to him, the existing distribution structure has not changed. He noted that although it takes some time, some little time to distribute LPG across the country, he assured the Ghanaian populace that the various retail stations would receive the product as soon as practicable. About 1,700 metric tons of LPG is in store, whilst an additional 10,000 metric tons are expected to be discharged from vessels in Tema to augment the supply from Takwari to improve the general supply of LPG in the country. American-based oil giant Hess Corporation has announced plans to submit appraisal plans uh, for the appraisal for the successful discoveries it has made in Ghana to government for approval by June this year. Last week, Hess Corporation said it has completed drilling its seventh consecutive successful exploratory well in Ghana. Hess holds a 90% working interest in the block and is also the operator. The Ghana National Petroleum Corporation is a 10% equity interest partner and is carried through to and is carried through to the production phase of the license based on the results of the Hess wells and Hess extensive experience in Equatorial Guinea where the geology is quite similar. The company now plans to submit appraisals uh, for the various discoveries to the Ghanaian government for approval on or before June 2, 2013. In parallel, Hess has begun pre-development studies on the block. We take another break. Stay with us here on the Monday. It's that time uh, in the bulletin where we try to keep you in shape and keep you updated about events going on around the world. And I'm not going to do that. The lady who always is in charge of that is in here with me. Uh, good afternoon, JJ. Good afternoon, Smart. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. You're looking nice and bright today. Oh, thank you. You're also looking... I, blue, I think <laughs> blue looks good on you. You do? Oh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank you. So, I hear we're talking fruits. Yes, we My are. My favorite fruit. The special probably. little something that gives you that extra glow. Oh. Yes, that's what we're doing on wellness today. Okay. Over to you. Okay. <laughs> now, we're going into the world of wellness, where we'll be taking a look at something special. I'm sure you've heard the adage, an apple a day keeps the doctors away. Well, while fruits are certainly nutritious and healthy, we can't just eat them whenever we feel like it. We all think eating fruits means simply buying the fruit, cutting it, and then just popping it into our mouths. But you will benefit much more from fruits if you know how and when to eat them. Fruits should be eaten on an empty stomach, not as dessert after your meal, is, as is often done. So if you eat fruit like this, then it will also help to detoxify your system, supplying you with a great deal of energy for weight loss and other life activities. Find out more about when or how you should eat fruits from the following report. are vital sources of essential nutrients which are often not present in the foods we consume daily. As a result, these nutrients including vitamins, minerals and essential oils are underconsumed. Fruits are very, very important because of their supportive role in making sure that people have uh, well-balanced uh, diets. Uh, when you have regular um, or when you eat fruits regularly, 
to it ensures that you are getting adequate amounts of vitamins and minerals which are uh, also nutrients there are two major nutrients that the body needs in little quantities uh, most of the time our regular meals do not supply them so when you have fruits at any time whether before during or after meals provided you've taken them during the day some of them can give you all of the vitamins or minerals that you need and um, those are very important for growth so fruits are very very important components of our, our diet because of the supplementary role they play high levels of potassium in fruits Okay, uh, before we go on with our briefs, uh, Ya Fosuaje, my colleague who is touring with the mayor, has an update for us. So uh, let's cross over now and join Ya, who is speaking with the mayor of Accra, Alfredo Kuvandapoy. The Hill uh, you know, project would eliminate the unconditional, I mean, unsanitary conditions with which we have always disposed of our liquid waste directly into the ocean. So that's an eyesore that has existed over the years, it is the commitment of the president, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, that we eliminate that uh, situation. And we are working very hard to make sure that it comes to fruition. Do you have any plans of constructing any more of these projects around? Yes, once we finish this one and we know that it has to the test of time, we will also consider constructing a second one, which will then give us all the needed facilities to ensure that, you know, uh, we have put in place appropriate measures for the disposal of liquid waste. Okay, Mayor, lastly, we want to find out how near is this um, project going to be completed? Well, all the school projects that we are seeing today must be completed at the end of March. That is our goal. And we want them to be available by the first week of April for our children to start enjoying them. Well, okay, so that was Yafu Swerjenfi speaking with the mayor of Accra, uh, Alfred Oko van der Poy, and uh, he tells us that the school projects they're working on should be completed, hopefully, by uh, the end of March, so at least the students can uh, use it in uh, April when school resumes. Uh, so, well, we had to take a break with a uh, bit on fruit, so let's bring you the, re the rest of the report on uh, the benefits of fruit. That was our world of wellness. And now let's step into the international world, where Kenyans are voting in an election that observers describe as the most important in the country's history. And in Rome, Roman Catholic cardinals from all around the world gather to begin the process of electing the next pope. Our international briefs are up next. In sports, Salas Teta prepares for another crack at the African Youth Championship with a pre-competition test against Italian side Novara today. Plus, Arsenal boss Arsene Wenger admitted his side would struggle to claim a top four Premier League place after their 2-1 defeat at rivals Tottenham. The game, which starts at 15 hours GMT, will be the Black Satellite's first since arriving in Italy last Thursday, and it comes after five important training sessions. The test game against the Italian Serie B side, who have two Ghanaian internationals, Mohamed Al Hassan and Ahmed Barroso, in their setup, is the first European test match lined up as Salas runs the rule on his squad. Salas Teto will lead Ghana to the finals in Algeria this month. He guided the Black Satellites to the 2009 African Youth Championship title. Well, that's all we have for our showbiz brief. And that's all of the briefs I brought you this afternoon. You know that AM started today? Yeah. Yeah, a good show, right? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, well, I don't even say thanks to, or I didn't have light. <laughs> that's a good spot too, so I couldn't watch, even though I know it starts today. Funnily enough, they watch. talked about that this morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people like me were expecting to watch it today, but... Well, thanks to, uh, no thanks to, we, oh, we couldn't well, watch it. Yeah. Just in case you want to watch, uh, you can go online and watch it. Um, find us on YouTube and also streams.myjoyonline.com. All right. Thanks a lot, Janie. <laughs> All right. Hey, I like that. Call it Janie. Okay, let's do some uh, business now. Bank of Ireland has recorded a loss of 1.8 billion euros for 2012. The lender saw little respite in the rate at which it had to write 
uh, of bad loans due to the property air crash. The bank took 1.7 billion euros in impairment charges versus 1.9 billion in 2011, of which 462 million euros was on mortgages and 797 million on construction and property loans. The losses dragged the 15% state-owned bank into the red for the year. And uh, that's it for the bulletin. But before we go, a recap of our headlines. Uh, we spoke to the CPP's Robert Wood, who was proposing that uh, if government intends to borrow money to deal with the energy crisis, it should consider investing those monies into alternative power sources such as wind, solar, and uh, biogas if possible uh, we also brought you an update on the tour by Accra mayor alfred van der Poort of some projects being undertaken by the assembly and he told us at least some of the schools they are working on they're expecting the schools to be complete by uh, ending of march for occupation by students in april and we also brought you some wellness and some briefs from around the world my name is niya kofi smata many thanks for your time we'll see you again tomorrow good afternoon